Blair Witch is a horror game which released on Windows and Xbox One in 2019 and the PlayStation 4 a little later that year. It's based on the Blair Witch universe which began with 1999's The Blair Witch Project, a found footage movie which had quite a fascinating marketing campaign and was a huge commercial success. Is it a worthwhile experience or will it leave you gibbering in the woods, snotting all over your camera? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to the publishers for the review code and now let's find out. That was disgusting, I'm so sorry. Blair Witch takes place in 1996, two years after the events of the first film and sees you taking on the role of a man named Ellis who is volunteering to look for a missing child in the woods near Burkittsville, Maryland. He has with him his dog, Bullet, to help him with the search and as you would expect, we learn a lot more about Ellis as we play, delving into his past as the woods bring his fears to the surface. In terms of Blair Witch lore, it's not mentioned all that much. Early on, it's established that people going missing has become a regular occurrence since the three students that went missing back in 94 and a non-playable character comments on how a woman was hanged in these woods for crimes of witchcraft years before. Gameplay-wise then, Blair Witch uses the walking simulator model seen in a slew of horror games in recent times, going back to things like Amnesia, to Bloober Team's other efforts, the Layers of Fear games, and other popular horror games such as the Outlast series. You will make your way through the woods looking for items or clues as to the whereabouts of the boy before a cutscene or set piece plays to move things along and tell you where to go next. What makes this one a little different is the inclusion of Bullet, your dog. Bullet can be interacted with throughout your journey by way of a wheel of commands and you access this by holding down the L button. Commands include Seek, which will see Bullet attempt to sniff out a trail and lead you in the right direction, getting him to stay close to you, or even praising or reprimanding him should you feel the need arises. The relationship you keep with Bullet is crucial for a couple of reasons. First, he acts as a calming mechanism to Ellis when things start to unravel and having him close by is key to managing Ellis's mental health at these times. Plus, your interactions with him count towards the ending you get on completion. In practice, the animal companion mechanic works quite well, although there are a few times when the seek command could have been a bit more effective to prevent you from getting lost, especially when night came around and it was very difficult to see where you were going. Plus, I experienced a moment where Bullet refused to move, despite the fact I was meant to be following him at the time. I had to resort to watching gameplay footage on YouTube to see if I was doing something wrong, and I wasn't. He just wouldn't move as he should have done. Eventually I had to leave him behind and walk on by myself to the next checkpoint where he magically appeared by my side. By this point though I'd started the game again, fearing that I'd run into a game breaking glitch. Whatever it was, it was certainly frustrating. The path is fairly linear, but due to everything looking similar, plus as I said low visibility at night, getting lost can happen at times. Sometimes you are meant to get lost, in fact the game replicates the part of the film where the three characters begin to realise they are walking around in circles. The problem with this is that seeing this in a film was scary because you could only imagine the helpless feeling that would come over you when you felt as if you could not escape the path you were on. In a game, it's just a bit irritating and I didn't enjoy these sections when they came around. To aid you on your journey, you have a few items that are accessible by holding down the R button. These include a torch or a flashlight, your backpack, a walkie-talkie and your mobile phone. Your backpack will be where you can interact with many of the objects you find, including letters or notes, a host of creepy photos, and even dog treats for bullet. The walkie-talkie allows you to speak to the sheriff, and finally your mobile phone can be used to make or receive phone calls, usually to your estranged wife, as well as receiving text messages or voicemails. This is all used to enhance the storytelling and move the plot along. Oh, and you can also play Snake on your phone, a game I haven't played since sitting on a bus in about 2001 so that was nice. To add to these items, you will also find a camcorder whilst making your way further into the woods, and such an item is a big deal in the Blair Witch franchise of course. Whilst not the first horror movie to use such a style, the 1999 original Blair Witch Project popularised the found footage horror movie to the point where the market was oversaturated with such films for years after. With this in mind, it would have been easy for the game to have you holding the camera for the duration, as the Outlast games do for example, but thankfully they were a bit more creative with how they implemented such an iconic item. Basically, you will find tapes as you go which can be viewed on this camcorder. These tapes will show something that has happened in the area recently and by using the rewind, fast forward or pause buttons you can manipulate time around you. For example, a tree may have fallen over and be blocking your path but by watching a tape of it falling over in the first place you can rewind to the point before it fell and the tree will be back to its original state. As well as this feature, you will be using the camcorder's night vision at times to navigate certain threats and obstacles. 
Whilst there is no real combat in the game to talk of, nor is it a case of you being completely defenceless and having to run and hide, you are most certainly not alone in the woods and at times you will need to defend yourself. Once again, Bullets comes into play. At times his behaviour will change and he will begin barking at something. You need to follow him and aim your torch in the direction he is barking to fend off whatever it is that's out there. And finally there is some light puzzle solving involved at certain points in the game. Nothing too taxing, but their inclusion did break things up a bit, adding a little variety to the gameplay which was nice. Control wise as mentioned the two menus, the one for items and for commands to bullet, are assigned to the shoulder buttons which works well. Movement of your character and the camera works with the left and right sticks respectively and you interact with objects with said R. Sometimes backing out of holding an object done by pressing B felt a bit sticky and you needed to press it more than once to do so, but on the whole the controls do their job well. Gameplay has some interesting ideas although the execution does not quite match the theory at times and it scores 13 out of 20. Controls work pretty well with the two radial wheels being assigned to the shoulder buttons a wise move and they score 15 out of 20. Looking at the visuals and starting with the positives, the setting of the woods for which the Blair Witch franchise is so well known manages to convey that feeling of natural beauty with an underlying sense of foreboding very well. The day to night cycle brings a menacing quality as the daylight hours drift away and losing your bearings in the dark not knowing what's just in front of you is unsettling. There is no need for a reliance on a mechanic such as limited batteries for your torch or anything like that because getting lost in the woods at night is genuinely frightening. But then there are the negatives and unfortunately there are quite a few. First, Blair Witch suffers quite badly from popping. During the day sections you will see areas of the background loading in as you walk, such as far off trees and bushes, which is quite distracting. Now in the early game I noticed it, made a mental note of it for review purposes and moved on. But the problem is, this is a horror game about being lost in the woods. So later on in the game when things naturally start going south, I saw an object move in the distance and my mind instantly raced as to what it could be. Was my character hallucinating? Is it the Blair Witch herself? But no, it was just a tree or rock popping in at the last minute again. You are meant to doubt your own senses, asking yourself, did something just move or am I imagining things? Thus truly emphasising with your character's predicament. But this is impossible when the background is literally moving in front of you half the time. Sometimes the colour of the ground will just change completely as you move forward, or a bush will change position slightly, and in handheld mode it's even worse, with whole branches and bridges loading in at the last minute. Again at first I thought it was deliberate, the game's way of playing with my psyche, as it does do at times to be fair, but no, these were plain and simple technical issues. That's before mentioning smaller issues such as your dog levitating off the floor at times, or the level of blur on bullet being so bad that he almost starts to blend in with the leaves and plants that he is walking through. Aside from this, Blair Witch runs at 30 frames per second, relatively consistently, although a sudden drop down to anywhere between 24 to 27 does cause the occasional stutter to the game's performance. When the game does make use of hallucinations or begins to blur the lines between dreams, fears or reality, it does it pretty well, so it's just a shame that technical issues dampen the overall effect of this. Turning our attention to audio sees us flipping from Blair Witch's biggest weakness to its greatest strength. Main character Ellis's interactions with the other characters seem genuine and a lot is done to flesh his character out. He is clearly a flawed character with a troubled past and you can see all of his anxieties and flaws on display as he goes through a full range of emotions throughout his journey. His interactions with Bullet show the bond between the two and a subtle use of HD rumble whenever Bullet barks is a nice touch. Then there is the sound. This ranges from the typical bird and frog noises you would hear as you travel through the woods to the effective but infrequent use of a score when a particular emotion needs stirring in the player. That's before you get to the more sinister sounds when things start going wrong. The horrible white noise as you near a stick figure and the haunting whisperings of something or someone deep into the woods. Play with headphones on as the game suggests and the experience is enhanced tenfold. At times it's as if the Blair Witch herself is literally whispering into your ear and it truly is quite terrifying. Visuals are disappointing but the biggest problem is they affect the tension of the gameplay by desensitising you to the movements in the shadows and for this they score 10 out of 20. Audio is the game's biggest strength and playing in portable mode with headphones on almost makes this Switch version worth it on its own and they score 18 out of 20. Blair Witch costs £26.99, $29 or Euros 99 or 45 Australian dollars and there is an introductory offer of 10% off this price until the 2nd of July plus you can get 15% off if you own one of Bloober Team's other Switch releases being Layers of Fear or Observer. 
For this price you are getting about 6 hours worth of content, although there are multiple endings to find based on the decisions that you make whilst playing. They all appear quite subtle choices, things you may have done or not done without giving it much of a second thought. There are no plans for a physical release which is disappointing, considering both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 receive one. To put it bluntly, this is just too expensive for me. As a huge fan of horror in any medium, I enjoyed my time with the game and I am happy to see the Blair Witch franchise being taken in a new direction, but I would have been very disappointed to have paid full price for this game, and value scores 12 out of 20. To conclude, Blair Witch gets a lot right in theory. Its setting has the potential to be terrifying, the mythos it ties itself to is one of horror's best known, plus it has a couple of interesting gameplay mechanics in terms of its time manipulation and your animal companion. However, some of this just doesn't translate across very well. Plus, whilst I'm not all about graphics at all, anyone that's watched the channel for any length of time will know that, when they affect the gameplay, it becomes an issue, and going from being on edge because you are sure something just moved, to not really being bothered anymore because it's probably just a rock loading in, is a big problem for a horror game. It's not without its merits, and it's still worth experiencing, just not at the price being asked. Blair Witch gets a switch up score of 68%. Thank you as always everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed that review, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.